Paul, we are live. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you doing? Good, good on this Friday. Um, I'm actually kind of wondering, what exactly is a typhoon? Can you kind of explain that for people that are not sure? Break it down for us. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, a lot of times one seems scarier than the other, and one actually occurs more often than the other because one forms a little bit warmer water than, let's say, the other. But basically, so you can just break it down in your head, typhoon versus a... Uh, uh, hurricane. It's basically um, a real estate deal. <laughs> a real estate deal? How yeah, is it's that? A, it's a real estate deal. In other words, really you call something a typhoon based on where it's located versus calling something a hurricane. They're basically the same storm. Same storm. Oh, and we got someone requesting a rap real quick. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But anyways. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so the difference. Yeah, it's it, the difference is, hey, pop me up though. For example, let's say we can go Go to the other one for me if you won't mind, Liz. Appreciate it. That's my man, Liz, running. He's All running. Right. He's my DJ spinning the records. In the there we go. Right? Okay. Now, Got lots of hearts for Liz. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so first of all, a typhoon, same as a hurricane, and actually uh, this particular uh, typhoon is because where it's located over in the Pacific, okay? And it's the location, you know, where it forms in the water. Now, and over here towards Shanghai and or towards Taipei and all where this water is located, uh -huh. this is lots warmer, so to speak. I know it's not proper gr grammar, so to speak, but I need for you to think of it that way. This is lots warmer here okay. than, let's say, over in the Atlantic, close to where we are. And so that's the big difference. Location, location, location. Typhoon versus hurricane. Now, so those of us who are on this side of the earth, all we know is hurricanes. Oh, hurricanes. Okay, so, so if you think hurricane, this particular typhoon, location, location, slash hurricane, or basically cyclone system, this one is actually at a category three strength right now. And now as you take a look at the impacts, as we're going to Monday, for example, we're looking at three about three basic impacts towards Taipei and up towards Hefei and then just missing Shanghai. So we're looking at extreme. We're looking at rain and we're looking at these particular storms always create heavy downpours, mm -hmm. flooding, both river flooding and flash flooding. Those are two different things, okay? We have a couple of people that said, uh -huh. is there El Nino instant, like, um, impact for it, it? There is an impact of El Nino, but it, once again, it's, it's, it's all from a statistical standpoint. You know, El Nino does affect, for example, our weather. It had an effect on the lack of tropical systems in our neck of the woods. So when you're talking about El Nino or La Nina, okay, mm -hmm. uh, we're... we're El Nino's dealing with the warming of the water. Now, over there, they usually have about 20 to 25 storms there versus the typical 12 to 15 that we may have on this side. And you want to know the big difference? I'm going to let you see. Come here. Come oh, come secret. back. <laughs> Here's the secret. Because they're warmer. Yeah, someone actually just said that. Luke Blair said right. because, so the Pacific because is they're warmer. Right. Because they're warmer. That's the only difference. Because Good job, they're Luke. warmer. <laughs> yeah, really. They're, because they're warmer, that's why they tend to have more of these typhoons, which we on this side of the earth would want to try to call them hurricanes. Think of it, and another way to think of it is versus, let's say, meters versus feet and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We have our way because we're used to calling them hurricanes. Now, once again, it's dealing with that counterclockwise cir circulation on this side of the equator. You got to remember, when you go below the equator, instead of a low pressure system creating these storms, it's a high pressure system. Because, and a lot of people don't know this, but for example, oh man, this is, this is so cool. I've got to handle this one because this is a high note here. When you flush the toilet here in America, it spins a certain way. <laughs> right? Right. If you're in Australia and you flush the toilet, it'll spin the opposite. Bet you didn't know that. But <laughs> okay, Actually, so anyway. I think I did. Yeah, but so anyway. <laughs> Counterclockwise. Um, and last but not least, here's the latest, uh, the latest tracking that's going to be here. We're looking at it making landfall for Saturday, going to the evening, and then another landfall here. And right here, it's still a hurricane strength. And you see when it goes from here to that little hole? Mm -hmm. That means we're going, it's going to be downgraded to a tropical storm. Okay? Tropical storms, not as strong as typhoons. Like what we call hurricanes, but really call a typhoon on that side of the planet. Uh -huh. And then here it begins to get downgraded to a low pressure system. And this is where by Tuesday we're expecting it to just fall apart. Okay. okay. So the so the relationship between this particular typhoon and the land, not a good relationship. It's a short term relationship and it's supposed to fall apart. And that's what you want in this kind of relationship because longevity you don't want with typhoons. And this is actually a monster of a typhoon. So we're continuing to trend and talk about this. And if you want more information, be sure you hit us up on AccuWeather.com.
Wonderful. Thanks so much, Paul, for breaking that down for us. We appreciate it. No, no problem. All Remember, right. location, location, location. location. <laughs> Happy Friday, everyone. Thank you. Sure.